Seattle, Washington at the U.S. Hobbit Association's Monster Truck Championship event as we get ready for side-by-side -side eliminations. Dennis Anderson in the near lane, the Grave Digger 1950 Chevrolet, leaves the starting line against Travis Welsh in the Destroyer. But look at the Grave Digger come on for an absolute blowout of the local Washington driver. While Travis Welsh left the starting line right with the Big Green Chevrolet, Anderson flat-footed it at the first set of crush cars and then wheels to his way across the finish line. He'll advance to the semi-final round for the Chevrolet fans. Anderson heads back to the pits to perform any in-between rounds repairs that may be needed. But at this point, the machine looks clean. Meanwhile, the local hero in the Super Feed, 1947 Peterbilt tractor, Mike Welsh, lines up on the starting line for his first round battle. Uh, interestingly enough, Welch will get a solo run here in the first round as Terry Woodcock in the unnamed and untamed Dodge could not return. Look at Welch nearly up on two wheels, even on a solo run here in the first round. Obviously, he wants to give the hometown fans a show with the Super P Peterbilt. Welch will return to the pit area as the next pair of machines approaches the starting line. And interestingly enough, it looks like this as well may be a solo effort. Brian Mabey in the AMPM Boss Chevrolet fleet side out of California was originally scheduled to take on Mike West in the Nasty Habits crew cab, but West himself scattered an engine with severe damage in the qualifying round, and maybe will get a very, very lucky free ride into the semifinal round. He'll use this effort to test the track and the truck. And as you can see, very conservative again off the starting line. Maybe gets back in the throttle hard, bounces around at the finish line, but he'll take a free ride into the semifinal round as well. It looks like there may have been even engine problems off the starting line as maybe eventually got full power back just before he hits the crush cars. And on the replay, you can see the rear end darting around as he crosses the finish line in a rather scary finish run. He'll head back to the pit area and remain ready for his semi-final bout. But in the meantime, out of the state of Georgia, the incredible Samson Chevrolet, as we pointed out, one of the original monster machines, moves to the starting line. Originally created by Don Maples in the late 1970s, the Samson 1 was one of the very first race monster trucks. But now he'll be taking on one of the toughest in the business. 24-year-old Jack Wilman Jr. out of Granite City, Illinois, in the incredible Taurus Chevrolet. The same that took him to the number two spot in the world championship race in last season's events. The Taurus Chevrolet inching forward to the starting line with 572 cubic inches of supercharged Chevrolet power. And certainly Robert Parker, the driver of Samson 1, is going to have to do everything within his power to hold off the purple Chevrolet in the far lane. Inching forward, both drivers staged, waiting for the flagman's signal. Driver reaction all important, and the whole shot goes to the Taurus Chevrolet. It's not even going to be a contest. Wilman shuts the power down well before the finish line when he realizes that he had the race in hand. After gaining that starting line advantage strictly through driver reaction, the Taurus Chevrolet was in perfect form, and as we pointed out, Wilman didn't even need to use the power on tap in this incredible ride. As he heads back to the pit area, he knows he is one step down on his way to a championship final round berth here in Seattle. So the semifinal round will give us Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger versus Super B and the AMPM boss against Taurus. In the world of stunts, there are quite a few individuals who personify their ability with words like insane and careless. But nobody quite captures the word daring as much as Brian Carson, probably one of the greatest automobile stunt drivers ever. Brian, you've been around this business long enough to admit that uh, there have been quite a few instances in your career where things didn't work out quite as well as you planned, but they ended up being boons to your career. Yeah, I mean, we always guarantee a wreck in our stunts, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's more than we expect. Uh, it's part of the business, and that's why people are paying the money, to see some guy get close to the edge and still walk away. And hopefully that'll happen here. You've had some rough rides. Yeah, I think every ride we do is a rough ride. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, we've known each other for quite a while here, and I've been in the business 16, 17 years, almost 1,800 cars wrecked. Uh, I must be doing something right safety-wise, otherwise I wouldn't be around, I don't think. Yeah, we, we push it a little bit, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, my, that's my job. That's what I'm getting paid to do. How do you feel about this particular building? I don't think you've ever uh, been in a situation where you've had to jump quite this high at an explosion of Kingdom. Uh, we are really strapped for room here. We've only got maybe 60 feet outside the building, and they're calling for rain tonight. So and if it rains, boy, we're going to be in deep trouble. See, if we go too fast in this stunt, we go over the cars. We go too slow, we get buried in a pile of fenders in the bottom. So it's going to be a tricky little stunt here in the kingdom. I should point out that you've never been one to be afraid of wet tires on concrete. No, I said, hey, we're getting paid to thrill these people. We're going to do it one way or the other. 
And if anybody can thrill him, Brian Carson is the man to do it, whether or not he comes out of it okay.